Dramatic, you are not the father reveals on paternity court. Mr. Sigmund, you are not. Oh, I know it! Her father. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins, you are not <laughs> her father. A mop of blonde hair and blue eyes led a grandmother to believe that her son was fooled by his wife. His child it may not be here. However, the defendant was confident that the young Armani Nairi was Mr. Cooper's daughter. They told me I conceived at the end of June. At that time, I was with Walter. Yes, I slept with the other guy in July, but by that time, I was already pregnant. I was, that's, the doctors even confirmed all of that. If you look at her face, her eyes change colors just like his, him. I mean, they sleep the same way, everything. Mr. Cooper was also the victim of false paternity. My concern is this, when I look at our mind, I don't see me. So, so he didn't want history to repeat itself. The paternity suspicion started when Mrs. Cooper did this. The first time I had an inclination that something was going on, I was actually working and I got sent home early. There was a power outage, they sent us home. And as I'm pulling into the driveway, I see this black car and this guy walks in to the building we live in. Then the house, the same guy that seen him come out the car is now sitting inside the house. When the judge implored more about an affair, Mrs. Cooper told her side of the story. The first four years of our relationship, he cheated on me the whole time. I admitted that I did cheat. He was not, he did not show no attention, no affection. There was nothing between us. Ironically, both spouses had been cheating on each other, which led to the drift in their nine year relationship. Mrs. Cooper, were you cheating with this man? At that time I was, but I wasn't. Me and Walter were on the outs. Walter had cheated on me so much. Even after swindling around, Mrs. Cooper was persistent that Armani was Mr. Cooper's child, and she brought evidence to the court. If you look down his family line, he's got white in his family line. I've even submitted a document of it where his grandmother- Jerome, can you please hand me His Mrs. grandmother Cooper's evidence is Though Judge Lauren Lake sort of found it convincing. If you have genetically Caucasian people in your family, it can throw back to that gene. Now, I'm not saying that's the case and that's why we're here today. We do not know if in fact this little girl is yours, but I will say that you're looking at the outward presentation of the biology. Now, it was time for the results. You are not. Oh, her father. Adoption is complicated. It can leave a person at six and seven. So when Cassandra Dandridge found out that she was adopted, she set out to find her real father. I was raised to believe that my sister's dad was my dad. I was like around nine or 12. I, I was old enough to know how to read. And I found adoption papers stating that my dad wasn't my dad, that I, I believed was my dad. I you found adoption papers indicating that the man you thought was your father had in fact adopted. After a long and a difficult search, she found a man who could potentially be her father. You say you are here to determine if you finally found your biological father. Yes, ma'am. You claim you were recently given the name of someone you believe is that man, though you've never laid eyes on him before. Petition the court to administer a DNA test to determine if he is, in fact, your long lost father. Cassandra told the judge, Lauren, that it was really arduous as her mother was no help. So she took to the help of social media. At some point, you got a name. How did you get that name? Roughly three months ago, I posted on Facebook, um, the status may hurt some people's feelings, but I really wanna know who my dad is. However, she managed to get her father's name from her mother. And my mom, she got on there and she uh, told me that I was a liar and that I never asked who my dad was and just threw his name at me. After listening to the whole story, Judge Lauren Lake had Mr. Sigmund and Cassandra's reaction to seeing her father for the first time was totally heartrending. Mr. Sigmund told his side of the story in a very descriptive way. 
I was in shock because I was told when I was younger I was sterile, that I couldn't have kids. But I was at the right place at the right time with her mother down in Florida. So, you didn't know her mother? Well, I met this lady, she tapped me on the shoulder, which was her mother. We spent a lot together. But next was soul sucking to watch. Mr. Sigmund, you are not oh, her father. That's not the next trial was White versus Mock. Mr. White believed that his ex-wife robbed him of paternity by hiding her pregnancy and letting some other men raise his daughter as their own. Mr. White, you've brought your ex-wife to court today because you believe she mysteriously had your parental rights revoked for a girl you believe was your biological daughter, thus allowing another man to adopt her. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. White even impressed Lake with his long legal feet but all went in vain. I acted as my own attorney because I had nothing but time, so I went to the law library and I taught myself law and acting as my own attorney, I fought it in court and I won. And at that time, it was the opinion. However, when a genetic disorder hit Tasha, she knew only one person to reach out to get answers. When I was 26, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I put a lot of thought into it. I was blind and I couldn't walk, so I had nothing but time to sit and think about it. And then when I had turned 28, I got my vision back and 29, I reached out Mr. White. Mrs. Mock, on the other hand, still refused to give Tasha the father she deserved. The only reason your daughter was adopted by another man is because you don't believe Mr. White is actually her biological father. You're adamant that you don't owe him a single dollar, and it's your hope that when today's test results are revealed, Mr. White will leave you and your daughter alone for good. Yes. Contrarily, Mr. White assured the court that even if he is not Tasha's biological father, he will help her find him. I made a promise to her the day that uh, she reached out to me. I'll do everything I can to help her find the truth. But, but Ms. Mock, do you hear what you're saying? Yes. So, after such a heart-ending moment, the genetic results left everyone heartbroken. 30-year-old Ms. Tasha Mock, it has been determined by this court. Mr. White, you are not the father. Are you okay? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. White, are you all right? When the paternal court steps in to end the years of confusion, it may cause parental disappointment. Morris knocked on Judge Lauren's door to reclaim his 29-year-old daughter who refused to believe Mr. Morris was her father. You say you are 100% certain that you are the biological father of the 29-year-old woman standing across the aisle and want this court to put an end to years of confusion, lies, and doubt. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Brister, you say you don't believe Mr. Morris is your father. Mr. Morris and his ex-wife were back again after years of separation. And the couple was insistent that Legenia Brister was not Mr. Brister's daughter. What is the status of your relationship right now? Well, we're back together. You are? Yes. Yes. We're a couple. After how many years? 14 years to be precise. 14 years? Yes. And now you're back together? Yes. But there's still this paternity issue hanging in the balance. Mr. Morris said that he visited Mr. Smith after Legenia was born. But what Mrs. Smith revealed, he had no choice but to depart for good. We had an issue and she told me to my face that no, none of her children were mine, so I left. So how old was Miss Brister at this time? I would say she had to be maybe five or six. So Miss Smith, you remember telling him that Miss Brister was not his child? Yes. He was trying to get back with me and I didn't want to get back with him. Judge Lauren asked Mrs. Brister why she doesn't believe Mr. Morris. Who were you told is your biological father, is a child? The man who's on my birth certificate, he was, I, I've always known him to be my father. And at what point did you realize there is a possibility he wasn't your biological father? I remember as a child, my mom taking me to get a DNA test and have a faint memory of her saying that he wasn't my father. Legenia brought her own set of evidence to prove 
prove that Mr. Morris and her mother were lying. You brought an exhibit for the court? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it, please. This is just a timeline, some of the things that she's told me over the years. Um, I've always known the man on my birth certificate to be my father. When I was about 16, Mr. Morris, he came to visit and um, he introduced himself as my dad. The bottom line was that this young woman had been told a variety of stories, and the paternal court was about to end some of them. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Morris. Yes, Sean. You are not her father. Uh -oh. What? See, when you're young, dumb, and full of eggs, you can end up in a reality TV courtroom by robbing someone's chance at parenthood. And that is why Mr. Wheat filed a case, because he believed that the defendant's daughter was his, and this truth had been hidden for a long time. As a father, you are desperate to prove to the defendant that you fathered her 19-year-old daughter, Sierra Sloan, and once you do, you want to make up for lost time, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. But Charlene Greider was adamant that Sierra was a Greider, not a wheat. But Sierra wanted every doubt cleared up. As much as you would like the plaintiff to be your daughter's biological father, facts are facts, and he isn't her dad, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Sloan, you say you are the victim in this paternity chaos and deserve to know who your dad is, is yes, that Yes, Your Honor. Even though Charlene admitted to fooling around with Mr. Wheat in a legendary line, which I sort of mentioned at the start, still, the chance of Mr. Wheat being Sierra's biological father was still slim. Right. Explain to the court why you are so certain. Because I was 19, I was young, dumb, and full of eggs, and I was having doing me. <laughs> young, dumb, and full of eggs, and doing me. I don't think I've ever heard it explained like that. <laughs> when Sierra's legal father was brought in, he told the court that he was with Charlene through the whole birth process, and he even named his baby girl. Me and Charlene were sleeping together and staying in the same house, and we were uh, having sex more than another guy. So were you there throughout her pregnancy and birth? Yes, ma'am. I was there, went to the doctor appointments. I named her, I signed a birth certificate. Now the teenager had two men in front of her, claiming that they were her father. And this led her to the edge, and she broke down in the middle of the trial. I, I see your face. This must be so confusing, honey. What are you feeling in this moment? Can you tell the court? I'm upset that I never knew who my real dad was. So when the moment of truth came, it left Sierra wrenched as the first envelope revealed that Mr. Greiner was not her father. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Greiner, you are not the father. Whereas the next envelope was like a sucker punch to Wheat. Mr. Wheat, you are not the father. Miss Case's paternity trial began with Mr. Edwards' flurry of claims about the big, awkward question. And Mr. Edwards, you claim that you and Miss Ewing were still in a sexual relationship at the time her daughter was conceived and hope to prove that you are indeed Miss Casey's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. The shocking revelation of Mr. Edward made us feel like things were about to get better for Case, as now she had a chance of paternity. Me, it was like a dark hole. Just I was walking down a, a dark hallway that it was never going to have no bright light to it, and it was kind of rough. But what happened next left everyone speechless. Hawkins, the man you believe to be your father was dead. Yes, ma'am. But he's alive. <laughs> and we found him for you. Jerome, please escort. Judge Lauren attempted to piece together what had actually happened. Did you make up the story about hearing that he had been shot and killed? No. No. I did not oh. make up that story. That's what I was told before I left San Diego to move back to Long Beach. That's what I was told. OK. But the whole happy family reunion ended when the DNA results came in. And the next revelation shocked us across the screen. 
Mr. Hawkins, you are not <laughs> her father. <laughs> this time, Judge Lauren came across a defendant and a complainee who were both claiming paternity for an 18-month-old baby. But only time will tell who will be the father. Good day, everyone. Ms. Harris, you have been caught in a love triangle. There are two men in court today claiming to have fathered your 18-month-old daughter, Anaya. Though this love triangle had a tendency to bring good drama to the paternity court, still, it began with a light note image that resembled a test. Now, you're currently in a relationship with Mr. Murray. Yes. But both Mr. Murray and Mr. Donaldson think they are your 18-month-old daughter Anaya's biological father. Yes. When the mother was asked about her relationship with Mr. Donaldson, she told the court that she was dumped by him. The next Donaldson mother was asked if she knew about the pregnancy. She confirmed that she did. But what her mother told her about Miss Gerald made Mrs. Donaldson doubt Anaya's paternity. When I got pregnant, he told me he had feelings for another girl, and he told me that he didn't want to be with me, so I was basically alone during my pregnancy. He was there during the baby shower, and he came to the hospital with his mom when I had her. So wait, you're dating Mr. Donaldson, you're in a relationship. You all a boyfriend and girlfriend? Yeah, we were. However, the next judgment turned to Mr. Murray to ask why he thinks that Anaya is her daughter to which he responded like this. I was on Facebook and I got a message mm -hmm. from uh, Jalen and he told me that the baby could possibly be mine. So and you get a message from Mr. Donaldson yeah. telling you that the baby could possibly be yours? Yeah, I need to get a DNA test. You sent him that message, <clears throat> Mr. Donaldson? I don't recall. I'm not gonna say yes, I'm not gonna say no. I don't recall. <laughs> After this to and fro of two young men around Anaya and the uncertainties in the case of the baby's paternity, the young mother sobbed. But when the result came in, Miss Gerald walked out of the courtroom. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Gerald Donaldson, you are not the father. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Murray, you are not the father. <laughs> I can't sit here no more. <laughs>